All right, so what I want to talk about is a zone ride that is like a great way to get started with a, uh, a riding progression. A1, A2, and A3 are going to drop back to the midline as fast as they can. And then we're going to number our midfielders, one, two, and three, with number two being the long pull. We're going to number our defensemen four, five, and six. Obviously, we've got a goalie who's going to be in the goal, and we're going to talk about him in a minute. We can't, we can't use him. The clearing team's going to have D, goalie D, and then we're going to put them to start off with in a four across clearing setup. So a lot of teams will run a four across. It's a, it's a really fundamental way to, to, to clear. And it's a good way to clear in many ways because it's, it's a pressure breaker. And so you'll see many high school programs and, and a lot of college programs will run this, this four across. Now, as you can see, um, as these players are trying to maybe get open, and, and we have six players guarding their four. And that's an advantage for us. And it's kind of like a little bit of a, a zone trap in hockey. As the defense and the goalie start bringing the ball up, um, they're going to have no pressure on them. And they're going to take their time. And oftentimes, 10 seconds will go by before they're actually outside of the box. The responsibilities of one, two, and three are, are basically not to let players get behind them and to guard players in their zone. So if this midi were to go over, three would guard it. If one of these two midis would go over, then two would have to guard it. Um, same thing here with one. They all shift like foosball men. They need to guard middies on the midline. But let's just say that if this middie goes over and, and number two is going to pick him up, and then this middie goes over, A2 is, let's, and let's say the ball's here with the goalie, A2 is going to try to be in exactly the line and be able to turn his head to look back and have his stick up over his head so that it would be a hard pass and like a lob that would go from this goalie to the, to the midi stepping over. So you can see how A2 and, and, and our long stick midi number two have to share that responsibility. But you can also see that, that depending on where M1 is, one could help over. Um, if M1 went over, you know, A1 would have to try to be in that, in that lane. And, and we're going to try to guard more than one person if we can. Obviously, the farther we are from the ball, the farther we can be from our man. Yep. And those are the basic principles of, of defense in general. The farther my man is from the ball, the farther I can be from my man. We're going to shift to the ball side, and uh, that's how we're going to play. And with A2 and 2 sharing M2 and M3 in here, and 1 and 3 sort of helping um, on the back side as much as they can. If D3 decides he wants to run it, he just A3 just can't let him get outside. If M3 is going to go over, and our number three is going to pick him up. And D3 is going to run it. You can see how if, if he gets off the sideline, it's over. Yeah. It's going to be cleared pretty easily. So if A3 can take away the sideline, A2 is going to have to come over and help. And this is where any time people are going to try to run it over, mm -hmm. our attackmen, and, and, and two would be sliding over, everybody would be sliding over, but A2 and A3 would try to force D3 to move it to somebody else. And you can see how 
if M3 was stepping over, if M3 stepped over, uh, as you, as you probably would, uh, the two man is going to come over and pick him up in this scenario. When D3 is running it over and M4 is going over M3 might go over with two. If D3 is running it over, nobody else can go over. The point is, is that you'll have the advantage when teams run it over because they'll hold, they'll hold too many people back on sides. You might even get a double between one and two or two and three at times. But you could take it away if you wanted to. You could try to lock it off. But I would recommend that the first thing you do is just see how athletic these minis are. And if you can imagine that M2 got the ball, that A1 and A2 could try and double this guy. And oftentimes you'll see he'll try to get – it'll be a right-handed player and he'll start making this move and he'll try to get outside of it. And, and you'll get – you'll actually get A3 to come over here and you'll get a triple on the ball a lot, okay? And this guy will try to get through it. And if he does get through it, you will oftentimes see one, two, and three sitting here literally guarding nobody getting ready to double team this, this Dodger because of the fact that these guys will stay on sides. The general rule is the person backside from the ball stays on sides. So like if the ball is getting cleared up the left side here, the bench side, this off bench side would stay on sides and one, two, three would go over. And it's tricky, as we talked about, when, it def when a low player, goalie or defenseman runs it over, then two players have to stay back. What's, what's really tricky for this clearing team is when M2 gets the ball, what side of the field is he on? He's not on a side. He's in the middle. If M2 is going to try to run it, and you got A2 sitting here waiting to try to double, you got A1 helping, you got A3 helping, and now he's like swims through that gap and he's coming over. He's coming over the, the midfield line. Can you see how there's going to be major indecision as to who should be going over? A double team between two and three on this M2 or between one and two if no other middies go over. Even at the D division one level, this scenario of recognition of who stays on side and who goes over would be hard to figure out, especially because the majority of the time, especially if they get the ball and they start running right handed, they're just sweeping across the field. They finally get over. You've got your long stick here and you've got another shorty here and you've got a double team in the middle of the field. Obviously, if M4 goes over, then three has to take him. that the clearing team will have players stay on sides because they're afraid to go off sides. And you'll also have teams go off sides. And so that's one of the things that this zone ride will do, um, particularly in this four, um, four across setup. You're going to have some times where M2 is just too athletic and it doesn't matter he's going to run right past everybody. When that happens, then you got to try to deny him the ball. The next thing that's going to happen is you're going to have the other coach screaming his head off, come on, attack, help him out. And so they're going to start running their attackmen up here. And a six against four is going to turn into a seven against five in some cases, an eight against six. Every time you add numbers to the equation, it's an advantage for the riding team and a disadvantage to the clearing team. If you're open, sure, come up and get the ball, but you're not going to be open because these guys are locking their guys off. You're close defense, four, five, and six, and you got your goalie in here. They're locking their guys off. You can turn this into a 10-man ride, and you can let your goalie bump your five guy up to the restraining line. So you put five right up here, 
And now he's not locking anybody off, so it's going to be the goalie is going to find the five guys, man, and you're going to bump five right to there. And the advantage of that is any time – if a team was, was smart, what they would probably do is they would try to put somebody down the field and make two go cover it. Mm -hmm. And now you've got five that can pick up anybody that gets behind two. Yeah, and it leaves two free to be a doubler anytime. So if you've got a really dynamic long stick midfielder, you could then let him play center field. You let one and three, you know, lock their guys. If somebody goes over, it be prepared to help double team if nobody's in their zone. But you can let two literally just pick up the ball as soon as it gets over the midline. But it's a really effective way of. Of, of putting some pressure on by turning this into a 10-man ride so that it, it will work for you at the high school level. It'll particularly work with your 50-50 ball games, which is really, you know, what you got to win anyways. This is a diamond ride versus a 31 clear, 3-3-1. It's pretty similar. You've got a one a two, a three, one, two, three. We got four, five, and six. We'll just say that they're all all locking their guys off back here for right now. One and three can't let people get behind them. So if M4 goes over, three has to guard it. M1 goes over, one has to guard it. Two is gonna have to guard M3 behind him. A2 is going to have to be directly in the line of if M2 goes over, A2. So if M2 goes to here in the balls of the goalie, A2 is going to have to get himself exactly on the line with his stick in the air and make this lob a tough play and give a little bit of time for maybe two or one or three to get there. Or, or it would make him run it up and throw it around them. So that would be another way that they could clear it. But, but, but the positioning of A2 when his man M2 goes over is going to be critical. So if he, if he plays it and gives a straight line pass, the guy can throw a rope. You know, if he can throw a rope, it's going to be an easy clear. If he can get into this lane exactly and force him to lob it over his head, it's a tough pass. And if they throw it too high, it gives these guys a chance to, to make a play on it. And if he throws it too low, you know, then, then he's going to get it. And if he stays back here, and this is 20 yards from here, that's a really hard pass. So this guy would really have to run it up to be able to throw that pass shorter to make that pass work. If he stays back from here and tries to throw it over the top, it's, it's a really hard pass. we will say M2 comes back to get it, and he gets it, and let's say he gets it over here. M2 gets it, comes back over there and gets it. You know, one would, would try to help out on M1, while A1 and A2 would help out on M2. And if you got around it, uh, A3 would – help triple it and three and one have to be able to step up and help. There's nobody else for them to guard. So they have to try to help out a little bit um, if this guy gets the ball and try to make it hard for him to throw the ball back to these guys. If he gets through that double, um, then right now it's going to probably be cleared because M2 has to guard M3. If they are getting through it, then of course you can lock off M2. Just don't let him clear it. Don't let him get the ball. That's a that, that would be the next thing that you do if you really couldn't if you couldn't ride him. It is so easy to bump your five guy up to guard him and now you free your two guy up, let your goalie come out and pick up an attackman. This this clear is almost an automatic 10-man ride situation. And now, when M2 runs it over, he's running right into two, and he might be running right into two and three, or one and two, depending on whether M1 or M4 go over. You already have one guy over. And so now, if this guy, if this guy's coming up the middle, it's, it's, and he gets through these attackmen, 
he's going to run into two, and there's, there's a really strong likelihood that M4 and M1 will stay on sides for the same reasons that I was explaining that before. So this is an open clear. And this is a little trickier because one will have to guard down here, three will have to guard here, two will be in the middle, A1 will have to guard M1, A3 will have to guard M4, and A2, just like two, are kind of in the middle and you kind of feel like you're guarding nobody there. And you can see how if M1 were to step over, D1 would be able to throw it to him and it, it, it would make it hard on, on the two guy to get there. Okay. Yeah. An open clear is a great way to go against a zone ride because it renders the guys in the middle you know, kind of useless because there's nobody in the middle. So you've got all yep. your players off the sides. They're stacked. You get A2 to take away the goalie. So so they're not going to be able to just – you're going to be able – they're going to make them throw a long pass to get the ball from one side to the other. And let's just say the ball's here with D1. Uh, the two guy would come over as M1 uh, would – step over a1 has to be really good at getting that stick up in the air and figuring out the exact line of that defenseman that attackman so that it's not so so that so that d1 can't throw an easy pass and again don't forget if it's 20 yards here it's a, it's a turnover way to happen a smarter well-coached team will run the ball up but you have to make them lob it do not yeah. let them just throw the straight pass and you could also see that m that the, the one guy might be able to help a little bit. Remember the rule of the farther your man is from the ball, the farther you can be from your man. So the one man can cheat off a little bit if the ball's all, all the year with D1 and, and maybe make a play on that, okay? But you can see how on the f <clears throat> initially that it wouldn't be that hard to take this away by, by doing that. So if they don't have it, what are they going to do? They're going to throw it and the goalie's taken away, they're going to have to throw it all the way over to D3. D1 will have to re, uh, throw it all the way over to D3, and everyone's going to have to shift. The two guys are going to have to bust his tail to get back. M4 is going to have to wait for M1 to get back. So if M1 hustles back and the two guy starts making his way all the way over, and M4 steps over here. A3 is going to have to get directly in that line. And, um, you know, you might or might not, depends on how athletic you are. You know, obviously, if, the, if this two guy can't cover that ground, then it's going to be, you know, this guy will run it up and throw it right over A3's head, and it could be cleared. This is, this is really exactly how 10-man rides, like how Coach Tiffany at, at uh, Virginia loves to 10-man ride. What he'd want to do here is be able to see this happening. And then let's just say that your two guys all the way over here, he, what he'd want to do is, is get the six guy to come up and push the three guy up who would then push – the attackman up while the ball was on its way. And that's how you bump through the stacks to 10 man ride. So your goalie would get the six guy. Your six guy would get a, a midfielder. The midfielder would, would push up and grab this midi and push the attackman up to the ball. And then all of a sudden, everybody is, everybody's covered. Because the two guy would be over here on M1 and the one guy <clears throat> would be then on D1. And then you can turn this into an everybody is covered 10 man ride against an open clear. And you can see why open clears are very susceptible to 10 mans because they can just, it's pretty easy to just push yeah. people up the stacks. 
Black's on offense, red is on defense. So we've got a midi, it's called the long stick here. We've got a shorty here, we've got a shorty here, we've got a D here, we've got a D here, and we've got a D here, and we've got our goalie in the goal, okay? okay it's a shot, save. These short sticks are gonna be going to the off bench side, and they might come back for the ball. Attackmen are going to try to get back. These two attackmen that are on the off bench side are going to try to guard middies while the middies are going to get back to occupy your three spot and your two spot. And you're going to get A2 and A3 are going to try to take away short stick one and short stick two. Short stick one and short stick two are taken away by A2 by A1, A2, and A3. The attack gotta take away those shorts. Yeah. Once they're, once, it only, you know, it may take three guys to, you know, to initially take them away, but eventually one attackman can guard one shorty and the other attackman can guard the other shorty. But after a while, these guys, the short sticks, are gonna go to their clearing spot, wherever that might be. Maybe it's, you know, here and here. Maybe it's in the across the midfield line. Maybe it's here and here. But they're going to kind of go to their clearing spots. You know what I mean? And so eventually, you know, if S, if short stick two goes to here and short stick one goes to here, well, that's fantastic. So now we've got A two goes to his spot and A three goes to his spot. Now they're going to have their long stick is going to get off and then get off the field, and they're going to have a midi come on. So let's just say they, they step him on here. We're going to have our one guy, remember? So we had two and three here. Our one midfielder who's going to get off is going to allow a long stick to come on in the one spot. Defense, just like that. And they're going to have their goalie right here. So here's their D goalie D with a defenseman in the middle. This defenseman is going to realize – you know, if they want to give it to him, they can, but now he's gonna to have to run through he's gonna to have to run through A1, A2, A3. And they're not ready. They probably won't do that. Probably not gonna just let their defenseman run it into a zone ride. So he's gonna make his way to his clearing spot. Could be off the field for a midfielder, could be right up to the midline, depends on what they're clearing. Two and the short stick in the two spot and the long stick in the one spot are gonna have time, especially if it goes to this side. If it goes to that side, these guys will have no problem flip-flopping their positions so you can get your long stick into the two spot. This is a midfielder that drops back into this center position of the two spot, and you, you flip-flopped him, you can easily get him off and get another defensive personnel on in that spot. So you could actually, pretty easily sub two of your three defenders. This guy is going to have to get there. Yeah. Can't, nothing you can do about him. 